I want to put a graphic before you. Between 2004 and 14, Mr. Narsimha Rao, during UPA 1 and 2, there were 50 suspensions, 50 between 2004 and 14. Between 2014 and 23, Mr. Narsimha Rao, as of today, we've already had 123 suspicion, uh, suspensions. So the dramatic number, it's not in percentage, it's numbers, we have gone up from 50 to 123. It seems that the government's reflex action, anyone questions them, anyone protests, suspend them. Uh, oh, I, uh, that absolutely is a very wrong interpretation, Radeep. It clearly tells how the functioning of parliament has been disrupted by the UPA, while NDA was a responsible opposition. And therefore, uh, obviously, the, the number of suspensions were far less. In the last, ever since Prime Minister Modiji became Prime Minister in 2014, we have seen, uh, uh, we have seen a lot of intolerance from the opposition. The Congress always thought uh, Rahul Gandhi or Gandhi family felt it was their preserve. And how could, how come, um, uh, uh, how come a man from Gujarat, uh, a man from a very poor and a humble background, how can he become prime minister with a majority of his own? So it is this intolerance which led to very disruptive behavior in parliament. And never, if the presiding officers, whether it is in Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, a suspension is a very extreme action. They are only... No, but that's the, the point, only sir, when the they extreme compare. action is becoming routine. In every session, it's happening. You're saying that the BJP MPs were far uh, better behaved when they were in the opposition. The truth is, the BJP would block session after session. When the UPA was in power, you will recall, especially between 2010 and 12, and yet it wasn't as if the MPs were being suspended in such a routine manner. Rajdeep, I think people recall those those days. How uh, uh, how uh, massive uh, scams uh, running into lakhs of crores of rupees were perpetrated during the UPA era, and certainly uh, uh, taking up the pu public uh, side uh, in Parliament was mandated by the UPA by the no, NDA. Absolutely, you had and, every and, right, and, but no one you you weren't suspended. You're right that y'all were taking up what you believed were the public causes on corruption. But you weren't being suspended in a routine manner. Now, whenever any opposition MP tries to raise his or her voice, first of all, there are no debates, there are fewer debates that take place. And if they demand a debate and enter the well no, of the house, they get suspended. Rajdeep, no suspension doesn't happen because somebody is simply seeking a debate. Disrupt that happens only when uh, you completely paralyze parliament. Mm -hmm. you, you do not even uh, listen to the presiding officers. You misuse your authority as, a, as, as members of parliament and you militate against public interest. When the BJP protested in parliament is with public interest. Had they dared to suspend more people, mm -hmm. the UPA would have suffered even greater. The suspension, they were not large hearted as you seem to think. They were compelled not to take any more actions mm -hmm. because they were in the wrong. Okay. They were forced to uh, uh, get a number of ministers to resign during the UPA era because that was a very egregiously corrupt government. But today, the protests are not about public interest. Quite often, you see the protests being raised only for the sake of their political of objection or political intolerance towards the BJP. Can You've I... seen how sessions have been washed out on issues which completely disappear. Issue issue begins one day before parliament session starts and the issue evaporates one day after the parliament session concludes. Okay. That I clearly think, shows I think... that these are... GVL, these I are premeditated acts. You're claiming that these are premeditated political acts not in the public interest. Mohan Kumar Manglam, respond to what you've just heard from GVL Narsimha Rao. Mr. Narsimha Rao saying that uh, the BJP was a responsible opposition is something that I don't think anyone will ever believe. The entire 15th Lok Sabha session was washed out because of the allegations they made. He's still maintaining those allegations and none of them have been proven true. There's not only, Rajdeep, the numbers you mentioned in terms of almost more than doubling number of suspensions from UPA versus NDA, but also there's a rising trend in these bulk suspensions. You know, the 16th Lok Sabha, I think in 2014, saw the highest number of suspensions with 49 members being suspended in one session. So the BJP has been trying different ways to sort of um, to make the, to refuse to hear the voice of the opposition. And they've, you know, turned off mics, they've muted the uh, 
transmissions on television. They've done everything they possibly could. Even when a member of the opposition is speaking, they try on Doordarshan to actually show the speaker on Lok Sabha TV versus uh, showing the person who's speaking. And now they finally got to suspending the opposition altogether. They have dismissed MPs on, for, on frivolous charges only to have them come back. They have now expelled a member of parliament. But when it comes to their own members of parliament, no matter how horrendous the language they use, like Ramesh Biduri, he's just let off with a slap on the wrist. Or it doesn't matter that the incident that's happened here, which is probably the most severe incident in the last 22 years in parliament, which has to be taken with all seriousness. And since they are talking about UAPA charges, it is with complete seriousness that the government is looking at this, that even then the MP who issued the passes is just being given a warning and let off. Whereas now you have MPs, what are we asking for? What is the opposition asking for? They're merely asking for the person responsible in government, the highest person, that is the Home Minister, to come and address them. The BJP was asking for the resignation of the Prime Minister in 2013, using all sorts of language, which is completely unparliamentary language against him, asking for his resignation, and we didn't suspend them then. And here we have all we're asking for him is to come and address the house. No, you're, you're and for that he's being suspended. No, you're, you're, oh, uh, yes, GVL, please respond. No, Rajiv, I think this is the most atrocious uh, demand I have ever heard. How, what on earth? How a minister does not control, he does not have the superintendence of uh, 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 the security of the parliament. Entire parliament complex, not just Lok Sabha complex, Lok Sabha chamber, the entire parliament compound is under the, under the control of Lok Sabha speaker. He is the one who supervises everything, including security. Oh, please. The, the, the is, home minister does not... No, no, one, one minute. minute. One, minute. one by one. Have, home minister does not look after the security inside parliament no, but, compound. But GVR, you, you will house. also agree that a statement from the home minister, if, you know, it can be a very basic statement about the inquiry going on, this unwillingness to face the opposition in parliament when the issues become uncomfortable and inconvenient. That's the worry. No, the, the, I think it's a more, you can't expect, you see, if there was an internal, if there was any uh, thing related to internal security in the country, obviously, Honorable Home Minister could have been asked to, uh, to make a statement here. The only one who is competent to make such a statement is the Honorable Speaker himself. Okay. And Honorable Speaker, time and again stated in Parliament, in Lok Sabha, mm -hmm. that an inquiry is underway. He has given some details of it. He has held a meeting with the floor leaders of all political parties. I think does uh, does the opposition? I want a straight, a straight. Uh, I have a straight okay. question. I want can to I, answer. Can does, I? Can I? Can I just for a moment? Uh, uh, one line. Let him complete. Let him complete. Yes, GBL. Complete. Does the opposition want? the government to take over parliament is that is that the, the, do they want parliament to lose its own independent autonomous status and government should run parliament please ask them 